Hello everyone, today's video is about Blastocystis hominis, everybody's favorite intestinal parasite. Uh, before I jump into the video, if you don't mind taking a quick moment to please like, share, subscribe, and or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thank you in advance for taking a second to do that. And as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So if someone posted a video or posted a question rather on one of my previous videos, which was called, um, can herbs treat blastocystis hominis? Um, video was posted quite a long time ago. I closed the tab on my computer, but I think it was a year ago or so, give or take, and um, it's been a fairly popular video. So um, thank you for posting this question. Um, there's actually quite a few questions, so I'm just going to kind of answer them in a rapid fire manner. This one individual asked a whole bunch of questions, so here we go. Um, so it says, hi, uh, could you uh, could you do a follow-up video on the topic of blastocystis hominis and describe what symptoms are resolved after elimination of um, that parasite? Um, so the patients that I've seen with blastocystis hominis, and I, I should just say for clarification purposes, uh, blastocystis hominis, um, if memory serves, it is a uh, protozoa. So it's a single-celled um, parasite, so it's not visible. It's not like a long, wormy-looking thing that you would one would see in their stool. Um, there's a bunch of protozoal um, parasites that can cause you know really notable illnesses. Um, it's such symptoms. Um, blastocystis hominis is kind of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it, it's, it's a bit of a, hmm, can't think of the right word, but kind of a debatable um, problem. Um, there's, uh, to my understanding, no consensus in the research literature suggesting that blastocystis hominis actually causes pathology. Um, there's certainly patients who test positive for blastocystis hominis. They have notable symptoms, um, but whether those symptoms are being caused by something else or the blastocystis is, is something that has just not been definitively determined. Um, and so uh, with that being said, I've had patients who have, you know, we run stool testing, SIBO testing, etc. The only thing we can find is blastocystis hominis. We treat for that. And in many cases, the patient gets better. Is it because the blastocystis is being treated or because of us inadvertently treating something else, you know, we really don't know for sure. But in my opinion, I think that it is a relevant laboratory finding and um, it's just the jury's out in terms of how definitively relevant is it for sure. Um, again, not saying that in any way, shape or form to downplay a person who's tested positive for blastocystis hominis and has a bunch of symptoms, it may very well be that those the, the blastocystis is causing those symptoms. Um, it's just to say when we uh, just to um, speak to kind of the, the state of research literature around this topic, it is something that's not as, you know, definitively um, determined as something like, you know, say SIBO, for example, or, um, you know, hemolytic E. coli in the large intestine or something like that. Um, so with patients that I've worked with who test positive for blastocystis hominis and we see that resolve, like, you know, we test, find it, treat, and then it doesn't come up on the follow-up labs, um, most patients feel better. Um, you know, they have a reduction in um, gas, bloating, abdominal pain, bowel irregularities, you know, whether it's constipation or diarrhea. Um, the thing with, um, I'm just going to call it B. hominis for short, so I don't have to keep saying blastocystis over and over again. Um, the thing with B. hominis is that um, it could be potentially associated with a myriad of different symptoms, and it can coexist with a bunch of other stuff too. So in some cases, that's the only thing that comes up on the stool testing. In many more cases that will come up along with other bacteria that might be associated with large intestine bacterial overgrowth, maybe SIBO, etc. But the long and short of it is that um, it, it can be uh, potentially a trigger for you know really any um, digestive symptom that one might might have uh, bowel issues, digest like um, gas and bloating issues, um, abdominal pain issues, reflux, nausea, etc. Um, does it cause extreme hunger, for instance, um, extreme enough to interrupt sleep in order to force the patient to eat? Um, you know, I don't know if that's something that I can directly attribute to B. hominis. Um, I've certainly seen that in some cases um, of SIBO um, and maybe other types of dysbiosis. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I've definitely seen that with SIBO. I don't know if I've seen that specifically with B. hominis. Again, it could coexist with something like SIBO. Um, but, but if a patient comes in saying like, I'm just ravenously hungry, I have, you know, what they call polyphagia, like, you know, eating all of these, uh, you know, just hungry all the time. Um, that's in my experience, a really big clue that there's some type of dysbiosis going on. Uh, does eating some categories of food, uh, cause intestinal pain, such as sugars or foods made from powdered grains or starches? Um, you know, with, with certain microbial overgrowth in the gut, like say candida overgrowth, it would stereotypically be more common that um, those patients might feel worse if they're consuming sugar, um, like, you know, refined sugar based products, or like even, even a lot of fruit, like things that are even high in natural sweeteners. There isn't, uh, to my knowledge, there's not really a, a similar um, observation with 
uh, be hominous for certain foods. So I, I'd have to say generally a no to that. Um, are proteins and fats neutral, meaning no pain is caused after eating those while infected? I haven't seen that correlation. Um, is there an odd type of fatigue after eating associated with B. hominis? Um, uh, not necessarily associated with B. hominis specifically, <clears throat> excuse me, but in other patients with um, dysbiosis, whether B. hominis is there or not, um, we can certainly see that kind of postprandial fatigue, um, absolutely. Um, or do, 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 yes, uh, fatigue is what you're asking about. Uh, sorry, it's, it's a long, lot of text and there's no spaces. So uh, just trying to find my space here. Um, <clears throat> so is constant high cortisol a finding in patients? Um, I haven't seen that or known about that to be specifically associated with B. hominis. Some patients, when they have chronic digestive issues, lots of symptoms that can provoke a lot of stress and anxiety, a lot of pain in some cases, uh, those things could certainly cause like a higher cortisol level to be running, not like in a, you know, Cushing syndrome where there's like a full-blown frank cortisol excess, but maybe on a um, salivary cortisol curve, we might see that tending to be up on the higher side, depending on how uh, much in pain or how anxious a patient might be. But I don't think there's any way that the B. hominis itself causes changes with cortisol. Um, is there any effect of B. hominis on common blood panels, like a complete blood count or a complete metabolic panel? Um, not to my knowledge. I mean, <clears throat> over time, if a person has a dysbiosis, whether it's B. hominis on its own or plus or minus other things, over time, if there's uh, if something's when something's triggering notable digestive issues, we might see, you know, say a lower white blood count or a lower hemoglobin, like things that might be associated with nutrient deficiencies. But generally, that would be um, not something that's specific to B. hominis. Um, is there an effect on clotting factors caused by this infection? Not that I know of. Does it cause diminished iron absorption um, or B12 um, absorption? So kind of dovetailing what I just said. So possibly over time, but not really specific to blastocystis. Are headaches or migraines caused by blastocystis? Um, I mean, I've had patients where when we resolve their um, digestive issues, um, headaches get better or go away, um, but it wouldn't be a specific thing for blastocystis, but it could potentially be associated with that. Uh, then finally, uh, that's a lot of questions. Um, you did say it was okay to ask, which is very true. Uh, I do say at the end of most of my videos, you know, post any questions you want, I'll get to them as soon as I'm able to. Um, so yes, absolutely fine to ask uh, those lots and lots of questions. Um, so I hope that that information was useful. If anybody has any comments or questions on this topic or anything else, please post in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer as soon as I can.